that it could do both research, environmental assessment work for oil and gas, mining, surveying work, biopharma, and even adventure tourism. We couldn't have done it without that partnership. You know, the Applied Physics Lab has been effectively our engineering partner. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. The dictionary definition of Titan is a person or thing of very great strength, intellect or importance, such as a Titan of American industry. A marvel of modern engineering, a craft of tremendous strength or resilience, the Titan was not. In fact, it's fair to say the craft that imploded last Sunday morning, June 18th, was a peculiarly weak and flawed design for a modern submersible. We've dealt so far with questions surrounding the makeup of its designer. Now we want to deal with difficult questions and as yet unanswered questions regarding the craft itself. Are claims such as this one below and also scrubbed from the company website true or false that OceanGate, in collaboration with experts from NASA, Boeing, and the University of Washington, made its subsea debut in 2018. That's according to a product page for the Titan submersible. As I say, the company's website has since taken it down. And then the shocker, Boeing has denied OceanGate's claims that it worked with the company to design the Titan submersible, which recently sank on a voyage to the shipwreck of the Titanic. And so this raises the question, where did Stockton Rush procure the cylindrical centerpiece of his experimental submersible? Before we get to that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. Welcome to the thousands of you who have subscribed. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, you might also enjoy reading books that are written on other disasters such as the 1996 Everest disaster. I'll put links to those in the description. Someone sent me an email today saying, you know, you never talk about the victims. Don't you care about the five people who died? You know, some of the people that you don't seem to have mentioned. Of course I do. I'm covering this case because it's so horrifying. It's if you, you put yourself in the shoes of that 19 year old or any of the people inside that submersible, it uh, it's a horror must have been a horrifying experience. And so what you're trying to do is find out what happened. And so, yes, obviously, our condolences go out to their family. And obviously, we want to know what happened here. That is what this is all about. And so I will obviously be covering each of the victims, the teenager, his father, the French pilot, and also Hamish Harding, each uh, individually uh, in future episodes, so look out for that. If you're enjoying this episode, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button, and let's get started. So on this issue of where did Stockton Rush procure the cylindrical centerpiece, you know, how did he actually go about building this whole thing? Well, guess what? OceanGate is based in Everett, Washington, and that is where some Boeing facilities, including the 737 assembly line, are also located. The submersibles company boasted that its Titan submersible was designed and engineered together with several companies, including Boeing. Now, already we seem to be seeing exaggerations and distortions in the narrative surrounding this vessel. But to be fair, Apparently, Boeing did assist in the research and development of the predecessor to Titan, Cyclops-1. Boeing has clarified that it, in fact, did help OceanGate build an initial design analysis for the 7-inch thick pressure vessel. The aerospace manufacturer, that's Boeing, is referring to a design which OceanGate announced in 2013, while well, that is like 10 years ago. At the time, the company, together with Boeing, and the University of Washington built the Cyclops I, the predecessor to the Titan. And I think that is this craft. One has the impression that Stockton wanted more. He wanted his craft to go further and deeper, but he didn't want to pay the exorbitant price of R&D all over again with the next sub. He probably also figured as an engineer that he could... I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. But was Stockton Rush like the Martians' Mark Watney? 
One thing we do know is he reckoned he could do better than the original design by trimming off two inches of the original seven-inch pressure vessel and making up for any loss by using special composites. You know, like one we do in aviation. Incidentally, carbon fiber is a popular newcomer to aviation right now. Between 2005 and 2016, about the time Titan was being conceived and built, the market for carbon fiber in aviation more than tripled. According to CompositesWorld.com, quote, the Boeing companies uh, and also Airbus in Toulouse, uh, you know, featuring the A350 and the A380 uh, and also the 787, all of those wide-body platforms accelerated composites use in aircraft, exceeding the airline's requirements for reduced fuel consumption and emissions, reduced maintenance and longer design life, also fewer parts and reduced tooling and assembly costs. For large wide-body aircraft, carbon fiber del delivers a winning value proposition. All of that looks and sounds pretty good on paper, right? So if the airlines are going carbon fiber to gain a competitive advantage, why not use this miracle product on a submersible? According to the Herald, an Everett-based news platform, quote, we partnered with aerospace experts at the University of Washington, NASA, and Boeing on the design of our hull. That's according to a promotional video on OceanGate's YouTube channel. The moderator's statement is accompanied by a screen covered in the logos for Boeing, NASA, and the University of Washington. This week, all three entities, Boeing, NASA, and the University of Washington, denied participating in the sub's design or construction. Let me just say, from a legal perspective, this already looks super serious. But the Herald continues, Their denials have raised questions as to whether OceanGate overstated, misrepresented, or exaggerated the role they played, if any, in developing the experimental vessel, designated to take high-paying customers to the Titanic wreckage. On Thursday, the U.S. Coast Guard said the vessel suffered, as we know, a catastrophic implosion. Such claims may have led tourists to believe that the sub was more thoroughly vetted and safer than it actually was, in spite of OceanGate's description of the sub as an experimental craft. Now, on the one hand, what you may be dealing with here is manipulative marketing, and if the marketing is a deliberate distortion and misrepresentation, then someone else besides Stockton could be on the hook as well. And I don't think scrubbing online posts is going to change that. I have actually read elsewhere that there's a, a, a description for this kind of marketing. I think they call it puffery, P-U-F-F-E-R-Y, and they say in America, you know, to exaggerate to some extent, to a certain point, is actually allowed and acceptable. The question is, the legal question is, have they crossed that line of puffery or not? Now, it's reasonable to say perhaps that OceanGate used a little license in its promotional material. There is, is a difference between making an explicitly untrue statement or making an incomplete or technically correct claim. According to the Herald, quote, denials of involvement in the sub's design have, have been issued by NASA and the University of Washington, but the space agency told an Alabama news outlet that it consulted with OceanGate at one point but did not conduct testing and manufacturing of the submersible via its workforce or facilities. So you're going to need someone to carefully go through the semantics and deal with a fine print and see whether – um, a line is being crossed or not. So this was this was the thing that the industry experts wanted Stockton to do, test the damn sub, get it certified. But perhaps Boeing haven't been completely forthcoming either. According to Vice, quote, just last month, Rush had reportedly bragged to Travel Weekly's editor-in-chief that he had gotten the carbon fiber used to make the Titan at a big discount well, guess from where? From Boeing. Why? Because it was past its shelf life for use in airplanes. Those are apparently Russia's own words. He also said those dates were set far before they had to be. And Boeing has since said that it's found no record of any sale of composite material 
to OceanGate or its CEO. Okay, so who to believe here? According to the Herald, quote, the University of Washington's Applied Physics Laboratory also issued a disclaimer this week. A 2013 university news release describes a joint effort by OceanGate and the physics lab. In a statement to the Herald on Thursday, the University of Washington said, quote, the physics lab initially signed a $5 million research collaborative agreement with OceanGate, but only about half a million's worth, $650,000 worth of work was completed before the two organizations parted ways. One gets the feeling that uh, Stockton kind of didn't really get along with the, the university staff either. Once again, it's plain to see what a devourer of treasure this frightful dream was and how much it was costing. And every time things broke or cracked or failed, pockets had to be emptied, cauldrons of treasure had to be drained. Let's go back to the Herald. Quote, that collaboration resulted in a steel hulled vessel named the Cyclops 1 that can travel to 500 meters depth, which is far shallower than the depths that OceanGate's Titan submersible traveled to. The laboratory was not involved in the design, engineering, or testing of the Titan submersible used in the RMS Titanic expedition. That's according to the University of Washington. Between 2015 and 2021, OceanGate used the University of Washington School of Oceanography's testing ranks for nine tests on a contract basis, according to the University of Washington. OceanGate was listed as the client, but no University of Washington researchers or staff provided any verification or validation of any OceanGate equipment as a result of those tests. OceanGate also partnered with Washington State University and uh, Everett Community College in offering internships to students and graduates. Ah, so now I think we can see the real reason for younger faces among the crew. According to the Herald, a 2018 WSU Everett news release offered an exuberant account of student involvement in designing the sub. When a five-person submersible descends to the floor of the North Atlantic this summer, part of a historic series of private ex excursions to map the famed RMS Titanic's wreckage in 3D imagery, it will be WSU Everett students that helped make it possible, according to a 2018 news release from the college. The release says that the sub's entire electrical system was designed by WSU Everett students. Not to be unkind, but it sort of shows. The impression I have of Stockton Rush is that he collaborated with various entities, seemed to have falling, like a falling out with each of them, all of them, and then ultimately, who was he going to rely on to do this testing and certification? And it seems like he ultimately was taking it all very personally. What do you guys think? Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.